I'm gonna clean these sections out here. I'm somewhat of a fanatic. That's not a hair algae, it's a filamentaceous algae. Water change Wednesday on Sunday is back, guys. I got my questions. First one. All right, let's get the adding of the sand out of the way. I had a couple viewers ask about whether I sh I'm adding sand or whether I'm not adding sand. I like the way some sand looks. It adds a little micro diversity into the tank, but I don't want to fill it. So what I did was I added about one quarter of the tank of sand towards the front and only about a half inch. And this is the process I use to put the live sand in there. This is some dead zones in here where the detritus builds up. I'm gonna suck all this out. I'm gonna add sand, about a half inch layer, down along the front here. I'm somewhat of a fanatic with filter floss when I do changes to the tank. For example, I'm gonna be putting sand in here or if I'm scraping the glass and there's a lot of algae floating around. I don't want that to just drift back down into my sump area. That's a new piece, I just took one out. Look how dark it is. See, I got light, see? I'm really trying to get the algae off. See what it looks like here. This will probably slowly blend in. I don't want to put it in this corner because it's near that rock flower. And it's in here and there. Now we'll see what happens when I turn the pumps back on. As you can see, there's not a lot of strong flow down in the bottom, which is nice. It's not blowing the sand around, but we have some nice flow up top. I think I like it, guys. You can see where I didn't put sand all the way to the back behind those rocks in the front. So I really only covered about one quarter of the tank. Look at this guy. It didn't take him long to find a home underneath that rock and mess the sand up a little. This guy's looking good. All right, I got a few viewers asked this also. I know there's so much out there, guys, about keeping your nitrates up a little and phosphates up a little. Okay, but the way I'm getting questions is there's people wanting to try to raise phosphate and nitrate, and I don't fully agree on that. To make an asserted effort to raise phosphate is a scary thing for me. If I have zero phosphate and zero nitrate and my tank looks great, I'm not doing a single thing to that tank. And a lot of us are beginners and you're calculating whether you wanna raise your phosphate or raise nitrate and you're not sure whether your tank looks great or not or low phosphate or nitrate are causing what's happening then just let the tank play out by itself. I'm saying don't be too concerned about low phosphate and low nitrate. If you want to do a little something, feed a little bit more. Maybe back off on a water change or two. But don't start dosing phosphate and nitrate. You have to be super advanced. How often do I replace the air stone in the skimmer? That's gonna be dependent on the fractionation. I have a large control knob on the pump that I have. 
so I can crank that to keep more bubbles coming through. So usually from my experience with the reef glass is that they start to clog and not make so many bubbles. So usually around one month, month and a half, and they're only two bucks a piece, three bucks for the stone. This is from Thurindu. Any advice on shadowing with SPS coral with your light? That's a tough one, guys. And if you've kept SPS, you know, the part that faces the light is the part that grows the best. I did see one reefer from Australia who had these, the arms came way out over the tank and they shined in the front. To get underneath is quite impossible. In the real reef, the sun isn't underneath. So the corals tend to just grow from the top up and the bottom gets shaded. All right, next one. How do you get your leather corals to stay glued? A large one. Chris has got a four inch size and it keeps coming unglued. What you have to do with large leather coral is you have to wedge them in. If they're not on a rock, a small piece of rock already, that's easy. You can just glue the rock to another rock. But what he's talking about is trying to get the actual leather glued onto a rock. It's almost impossible because when they stretch, they release. So what I do is if I don't have it on a rock, you have to find a deep enough crevice with a large coral and you wedge it down in there. It won't hurt the coral. It'll kind of form to that crevice and then start to grow there. And you might add a little bit of glue down inside that crevice. Gene asked about my lighting and programming. Like, is each one programmed individually? And yes, it is. My lights come on like the sunrise. So all the lights on the right side, which face the east, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It depends on where you are in the globe. But I have those lights come on first and then they come across the tank and all light. So they ramp up and they also come on during a certain time period in the morning. Once they're at their max, I do have some brighter than others, depending on where they are. The A80s are full on. They don't have the intensity that the Soul and the 16HD do. The back one over the Fire Digitata is the brightest. I think I have that cool white is up to about 60% and the blues are all up, like my other lights, 100% blues. But you know, as time goes by, I adjust and change things, and depending on what the corals look like, I experiment, but they all can be set individually. So I'm gonna use the 20 for a temporary stay for the fish that come in. Just a miraculous comeback on that file fish. I was ready to put him in the waste can and I saw a tiny flutter of his dorsal fin. And I said, maybe he can make it. And sure enough. Hey!